made so far. It comes as we're learning more. So far this year, there have been more than 20,000 cases of shoplifting. And about 10% of those have been grand larceny, which means... New York is in a bad place right now. Something went down over here. This is a bus station. I'm guessing this was like a car crash. Just a month ago, New York City was on an upward trajectory. Crime levels were stabilizing. Crime in the subway was decreasing and plans were being put in place to deal with shoplifting, dangerous incidents, petty theft. And what's crazy is that for years, the subway had just been this constant flood of bad news for the city and it was finally starting to look better. People use it every day. We need a good subway. We don't have one right now and things just don't seem to be improving there at all. Crime was down about 20% in the subway because they were writing a lot of tickets. There was an increased police presence, but that doesn't seem to have prevented some of the recent tragic events that have happened down here. 10,000 summons had been written during the first three months of the year. That's a lot of tickets for fare evasion. There were even announcements in the train about how you could contact the authorities if you were in trouble or if you felt like you were in an unsafe situation or if you needed assistance of any kind. This station has security personnel throughout, but sadly it hasn't been enough. Look at this, there was a recent incident Incident where somebody was bumped into a car. Police are saying it was a random, unprovoked incident. They don't really have a motive. Unfortunately, unsafe conditions on trains, that's normal. There just are not enough resources to completely police every train, every platform, and to keep everyone safe all the time. Now, granted, it's not possible to be safe 100% of the time anywhere, especially out in public and especially in a big city like this. Now look, a dangerous, unsafe subway system, this is a disaster for everybody, not just the people that use it, but the entire city, because this is how activity takes place. It runs on the weekend, it runs in the evening, and it runs on holidays. Yes, there's a reduced schedule, but you can pretty much count on the train to show up sometimes. And since not just regular New Yorkers use the train, this also includes tourists, people who might just be here from out of town. If people could spend more time riding the train than worrying about their personal safety, more people would use it, it would earn more money, they wouldn't have to jack up the fares to the level where people are constantly hopping because it's way too expensive. Unlike the current MTA turnstiles, which have been prone for years to fare jumpers, some of the high-tech models the MTA is now looking at have higher glass doors, plus a buzzer system could instantly notify the MTA or law enforcement. So I think that's a good idea, but the problem is there aren't enough resources to police every single gate. Now the gate that we were just at on West 4th, that had police in front of it, they were there watching. That's kind of a red flag if you're thinking of sneaking in, but not every station's like that. Some are completely unattended. You got it. There you go. Yep, take care. Thank you. Thank you. Right around the corner there. I didn't see them, but you actually have a couple of uniformed officers. And look, they are right by the emergency exit, which is how people get into terminals like this without paying, even though there's no way to get through this. You've also got cameras. Here's another entrance. So look, we've got the safety gates on this side, but then over here we have the regular turnstiles, and we have a booth with a station attendant. Believe it or not, at this station I've seen people jump. The MTA lost $500 million to fare evaders in 2021, then last year, 690 million. The fiscal losses caused by fare and toll evasion are staggering. The panel suggests making more commuters eligible for half-priced entry known as fare fare. So if you want to ride the train, a single ride, three dollars just to go one way on the train. Round trip, six dollars. Now the reduced fare, that'll bring it down to a dollar fifty, so your round trip would go from six dollars to three dollars much more reasonable. I think that the more people that would be able to take advantage of that, the better. And when you look at how much money the city's losing from fare evasion, it almost makes sense that we'd all be better off if it were just cheaper for everybody or for most people even. I mean, obviously they need more money. Look, every train is experiencing delays at some point. Right now, that's not the case, but then in the evenings, on the weekends, at night, it's not as fast as it is during the day.
Now, if you don't want to take the train because you don't feel comfortable taking it or you just prefer not to, you do have some other options, some of which are cheaper than the actual train itself. And one of those involves getting a bike. There we go. But there are some problems associated with getting your own bike. For example, it can never be nice because it stays out on the street and it has to kind of look like this or else it's going to become a magnet for thieves. If you have a quick release lever on your wheel, you better secure it and hope the thief doesn't own a screwdriver or a set of bolt cutters because that would get through that lock real quick. Also, if you have a bike, you have to keep it inside at night because bikes that stay out overnight usually don't make the whole night. It's gonna take up space in your apartment. A better option might be to get one of these city bikes. I checked and it's $205 for the year. $200 is more money than a bike like this would sell for online. And you don't have to worry about where to park or how to maintain the bike. Now you can't just leave one of these anywhere. It's gonna get stolen. And the fine for that is like 1200 bucks. It's expensive. But every white dot on this map is a place where you could put it. That's pretty good. Good, pretty extensive. And they'll give you more time if you come here to park your bike and you can't. And I think this is the cheapest, the lowest cost mode of transportation in New York City, hands down. There's nothing cheaper than $200. Granted, they're not exactly nice, but the e-bikes are nice. I rode one of those, it'll go like 18. Got the little digital dashboard. And let's say you work in an office, even when it gets cold out, you could probably still use city bike. As long as you don't have to work outside after you've ridden a bike in freezing cold weather for 30 minutes. Your other option, would be to get an e-bike, but these things have a whole host of problems. This one's actually mine, and it's my second one. The first one got stolen. It's great, though. It's a lot of fun. It'll go 38 miles an hour. But you're gonna need an apartment that has a storage locker like I have where I keep it, and it already takes up way too much room. And you'll probably also want to disconnect the battery and bring that inside because that's half the value of the bike. This company doesn't actually sell these individually. You have to buy the bike if you want one. the bus, but I don't know if that bus is going to get here anytime soon. Crazy, they're replacing the entire station after that accident. Look at that, all that heavy concrete, they're just dumping it. But even after they fix it, buses are so unreliable, they hit traffic, there's delays. One time I rode the bus for over an hour and it only went one block, there was so much traffic. But that's not the only problem New York's dealing with now. Six thousand incidents of shoplifting were attributed to only 327 people. That's like a full-time job. These are professionals that are taking things. They're probably not using everything that they steal. It's probably getting sold online or something. Every aisle here has locked cabinets and anything that could be a target for somebody to take is pretty much locked. It really makes the whole shopping experience frustrating. If you're in a rush and you need something quick, you're gonna have to wait. Recording in progress. So they're keeping an eye on it. Look at this, the drinks are even locked up. And that makes sense. As inflation goes up, stuff like this starts to cost four or $5 a can. Now, since most of the crime is committed by a very small uh, minority of people, the mayor's office wants to make some changes for how they go about enforcing and cracking down on this. They wanna try to find those people. There's also some sort of plan to install social services kiosks in retail stores. As far as I know, this hasn't been put into place at any particular stores yet, but if it is, be sure to go there and check it out and see what that system is like. James, how long have you lived in New York? Uh, going on six years. Six years. Now, yeah. when you moved here, was this Walgreens open? Probably, yeah. I used to live on 23rd and 3rd. Oh, okay, cool. James is also like eight feet tall. That's why the camera's like pointed up at his chin. How about the Food Emporium? The food Emporium was here, yeah. Yeah, it was here. You know, it's funny. I think ever since the last few years, you get the glass behind the walls. You got to click a button to think to get your deodorant or whatever it is. Have you ever bought something online because you knew that going to the store was just going to be that much more difficult? I do, yeah. My, right? uh, yeah, all the time. Amazon, my hair gel. <laughs> <laughs> and that's like something that you used to get at a Walgreens, which behind yes. us is not here anymore. No. It's too bad. Yeah. 
makes sense that Target has good security. I mean, after all, they have electronics. These Apple cases, these things are expensive. Printer ink cartridges. Boy, you could sell those online if you had them, which would be wrong. This is pretty crazy, though. Look at that. They got the boxer briefs and a lot of the skin stuff and the other cosmetics. I saw a video of a Target in San Francisco, and the whole store was behind these glass enclosures. That's not the case here. Most of the aisles are empty and clear. Things are accessible, but there are a lot of staff, so it's well policed. There's a security booth. There's also a security guard upstairs by the door. You can tell it's a big store too. They need a lot of people. But it seems like this rise in shoplifting is actually gonna benefit stores like this that can afford the extra staff. I mean, of course, places like Amazon, Target, they've got the money to kind of tough this out. And as their competitors go out of business, you're only gonna have one place to buy the best frozen pizza in the world, which is the Red Baron pepperoni. Six dollars. I've eaten so many of these that I probably should stop. Finish just put it in the You got it. Thanks. I'll see you later. Did you know that it's also gonna get harder to live in these apartments? No power in this one, but it doesn't matter. Because this apartment has a fancy schmancy new gas meter. Look at that, all nice and clean. And it still has a gas stove. New York has recently banned gas stoves. That ban applies to buildings that are new buildings. This is an older building. Building decarbonization requires new homes and buildings seven stories or less to be emissions free by December of 2025 and all other buildings by 2028. That's gonna be interesting. This is a bright sunny apartment with a view of the Empire State Building. But it's not brand new. I think it's over 100 years old. I don't know if it's always gonna have a gas stove because it's not a new construction. Apparently there's gonna be ways to get exceptions for large buildings, large industrial, large commercial. Assuming that modernizing places like this is gonna be next to impossible and these buildings will probably always be here in this type of state. But as a real estate agent here in New York, I actually don't like gas stoves in residential buildings. In my personal apartment, I want gas, but if I have to rent it, you see this? There was a time when all of the gas mains were in the walls of the building. That one's in a pretty good location. It's away from everything else. But one apartment I rented had gas lines in a wall that looked like this. That's a great spot for a TV. And you know what? Somebody tried to put a TV there. They drilled into it and they punctured the gas line, knocking out the gas for the entire building. You'd wish your stove were electric if it were gas and it didn't work. This is the apartment next door. This one's beautiful, one of my favorites in the building. And look at this, we've got the gas right there. It's like right in the living room. I'm sure that somebody would have thought that, hey, maybe they should hang something here, but that would be a bad idea. But look out this window. I'm sure that everything we can see right now is a gas powered building. So we'll have to see what becomes of uh, these rules. Definitely new constructions they're gonna apply to, but an older building like this, it's gonna be pretty interesting to see if it has to make any changes and what those are. Maybe they'll just have to put in electric stoves. Maybe it'll be more than that. I'll see you in the next video.